Hey everyone, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. Today we are going to be going back to Mount Rainier National Park. We're going to be talking about the disappearance of Joseph Wood, who went by Joe. He was an editor, an author, an amazingly intelligent young man. For those of you that aren't aware, Mount Rainier is located in the state of Washington. At its peak, it is 14,411 feet, making it the tallest mountain not only in Washington State, but in the Northern Cascades. We have covered several different disappearances in this area on this channel, and sadly, this is just another one where we have absolutely no idea what happened to this man. Before I start, if you haven't subscribed, I'd ask you to please consider subscribing. It's free, and it really, really helps the channel. This is Joseph Joe Wood. He was only 34 years old when he went missing. Joe grew up as a lover of the outdoors. He joined the Boy Scouts. And he was made an Eagle Scout. He then went on to Yale University, which is an Ivy League school. It's one of the best schools here in the United States. He graduated in 1990 with honors which he was awarded a very prestigious fellowship from the New York Foundation for the Arts. He had always dreamed about going to Ghana, learning the culture, traveling. So this is what he did with his fellowship. He went there, he studied. This is where he also took up writing. He actually wrote his first book, which he got published, called The Blood whispers and color lines. I'll have more information in the description. After Joe returned to the United States, he went on to become the editor of The Village Voice. The Village Voice is a free newspaper in New York City. I have to admit it was my favorite newspaper when I was living in New York City. It just is an amazing, amazing newspaper. He then went on to get a job as an editor with the New Press. This is also located in New York City. Everyone that knew him said that he was extremely talented. I just wanted to mention roughly three or four months before he disappeared, he fainted while he was at an airport. He was diagnosed with some kind of a heart murmur. They thought they might have to be putting in a pacemaker, but his doctors cleared him to travel, exercise, hike, or do whatever he wanted. On July 7th of 1999, he flew from New York City to Seattle, Washington to attend the 1999 Unity National Conference for Minority Journalists. He was there with many of his associates, including an ex-girlfriend. He told them that after the first day of the conference, he wanted to drive out to Mount Rainier just for a day, do some day hiking, bird watching, which he had recently become a fan of. So the next day, that's exactly what he did. He rented a car and drove out to Mount Rainier. July 8th of 1999, we know that he drove the 60 to 65 miles southeast of Seattle. He entered the park at roughly 12.30 p.m. according to a car receipt that they later found. This was at the Nisqually entrance. He then went on to Longmire, which he intended to hike up to Mildred Point. Despite this being almost mid-July, that year that whole area had been hit with a absolutely horrible winter. There were still several feet of snow even at the lower elevations. This is a map of his intended route that red dot is Mildred Point. As I said, he went out there mainly to bird watch. Unfortunately, all he was wearing was a t-shirt, some pants, and he had a book of birds and was carrying a pair of binoculars. He had no overnight gear and wasn't really prepared for the snow and the cooler weather that was on the mountain at the time. It's hard to depict, but in and around this area, there are many different trails. There are many marked trails. There are also many trails that hikers have just gone off trail. This is a picture of the area he may have been hiking in when there wasn't a lot of snow on the ground. This picture coming up is an area of Mildred Point, again, when there wouldn't be a lot of snow on the ground, when it was summer, clear. As you could see, it would be not that difficult of a hike, even though it is very dense, very forested. 
He told his one friend that he was simply going on a three-hour hike, if that. He just wanted to see if he could capture or see a couple of different bird species. He didn't really elaborate other than that. Some of them were a little worried because the next day at the conference in Seattle, he did not show up. But none of them sounded the alarm. They just figured since he was such an outdoors lover, he decided to stay. That was until July 11th when he still hadn't returned to New York City and his ex-girlfriend, a woman by the name of Miss Sengupta, she was working as a reporter for the New York Times at the time. She called all of his friends. None of them had heard from him. And remember, this was 1999. Most people didn't have cell phones. So they all got together and they flew out to Washington. They became even more alarmed when they discovered that he had not checked out of his hotel room. His car rental had not been returned. When they went out to Mount Rainier to try and retrace his steps, they couldn't believe the amount of snow that was still on the ground because of the time. They were going up the route that they thought he was going up. When they encountered a ranger, the ranger told them that it was too dangerous and to turn around. This was Tuesday, July 13th, and this is when they officially reported him missing. The Mount Rainier Park Service and Search and Rescue found his car. They found the receipt. This is why we know he parked around 12.29 p.m. on the day that he went missing. Since they were all reporters and editors, they made sure the story got into the press. The Park Service interviewed people that were in the area. Nobody had seen or heard from him. What was even worse was there was still a very significant amount of snow on the ground, which hindered the ground efforts. Even at 3,000 feet, there was over four feet of snow. Then one of the local papers printed this article telling about Joe's disappearance. A man that had been hiking the mountain that same day contacted the authorities. Now this was July 15th, so this was over a week now that Joe had been missing. This hiker, a man by the name of Bruce, said that he had met Joe off of the Rampart Ridge Trail at roughly 4,800 feet on July 8th at around 2 p.m. They had a small chat. Joe had asked Bruce whether the snow had continued to cover the trail going further. Bruce told him that, yes, he had gone up over a quarter mile and it just got worse. He saw several dangerous snow bridges, so he said that he would not advise moving forward. Bruce also said that Joe said that he had not been following the regular trails. He had just been following hikers' footprints, hoping to possibly get some views of various uh, wildlife. Bruce said that Joe just went on and Bruce continued down the mountain and that was the last time he saw him. Despite this giving search and rescue a more targeted area to look for Joe, that very day, a huge rainstorm and warm front hit the area where between two and four feet of snow melted within a couple of days. While yes, this did make it easier for the ground teams to look for Joe, they also knew that it most likely washed away, erased any possible footprints or possible other evidence, clothing, maybe the binoculars, anything. But they kept on searching. They brought in several dog teams, more volunteers. I know some of these pictures aren't the best, but this was over 20 years ago. They brought in backcountry rangers. They brought in various firefighters, many volunteers. They brought in another helicopter that continued to search the southwest area of the park because they knew based on all the evidence they had, based on the witness testimony, what Joe was wearing, he couldn't have gotten that far on foot, especially due to the weather conditions. They didn't have the drone teams that could search some of the untouchable areas like we can today. The search ultimately changed from a search and rescue to a recovery mission. Mark Morgan, a spokesman for the park, said that they were pretty sure that they would find him after especially all the snow melted, but even after all their extended efforts, Mr. Joseph Joe Wood was never found. None of his clothing was found, his book wasn't found, his glasses. Ultimately, sadly, they had to suspend the search. This is a park that receives millions of visitors each year. Last year, over 2 million visitors visited Mount Rainier National Park. 
according to records, more and more people keep visiting every year. And still, after all these people have been through this park, nothing has ever been found. And yes, I've looked at cases similar to this, but usually something eventually is found. Maybe a pair of glasses, the binoculars, something. This is one of those cases where it's like Joe just vanished into thin air. My thoughts and prayers go out to Joe, his family, his friends, all of his associates, everyone that helped look for him, and everyone that still has not given up and continues to search for Joe. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate all your feedback, your comments, your support. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music. Hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me to the end. I will have additional information in the description with various sources if you'd like to do further reading or research on this case. If you happen to have more information, I would love to hear from you. This is one of the parks that I've actually never been to but really want to go out to not only see it for myself but investigate some of these cases and hopefully help bring some closure to some of these families because not knowing is the worst. This is what all these families always tell me and I just can't imagine what they're going through. If you have any case suggestions or feedback, I always love to hear from you. My information is in the description, including my email address, or you can leave a comment. I really appreciate all your comments and feedback. If you'd like to leave a donation, anything goes such a long way, but really just watching and commenting or liking the video, that's really just so helpful. If you guys want me to do the videos in a different format with me, talking more in front of the camera and just showing you various clips. I can do that, whatever. I just want to hear from you guys. I love hearing your feedback, all the information you have to share. I'm always up for new ideas and thoughts. If anyone wants to buy a calendar, I know it's getting late in the year. Just let me know. That information will be in the description too. Thanks again and see you next time.